Hi, everyone. Hi. Thanks for the energy. Yeah. Cool. So my name is Ty, and I'm going to talk about how teams work today. So I feel like it's really relevant to what Catherine shared earlier, and I feel like everyone should be part of a team, right? So I'll ask some question in between, and we'll have some like back and forth interactions. So I hope you'll enjoy this conversation. Cool. So um, my company, Meteor, we used to be a software company. So we built on agile uh, methodology, and we help teams to um, run better meetings. So our, our software is a meeting software to help people to like how to plan your meetings, how you follow through, how you facilitate a conversation. And meetings are like part of team collaboration, and which is like really essential to our work. And later on, in the last few years, we do a lot of uh, work on team development. So how do you build a thriving team, like the topic we, we we're talking about today. So from starting from being a productive team, and then becoming high performing, and then we can talk about thriving. So we might go through this process a little bit later today. And my mission is just um, help people and teams work happier together and achieve better results. So I'm a change maker or a team coach. So team coaches, I work with teams to uh, help them to look at what are their strengths and what are their areas or opportunities for them and how they can better work with each other. So that's what we study in organizational psychology. We learn about how the team dynamics work. And we will talk about like, we know everything we want to do, but at some, at some point, like things couldn't get done. And wh why is that? So we can explore a little bit. Um, I'm also the author of this book. It's called Momentum. It's all about meetings. Um, so if you're interested in like bringing meeting best practices to your organization, think about this from the culture's perspective. Like, because meeting is, uh, is, you can experiment it every day. So every day you might have like one or two new meetings that you can use different strategies to make it better. So today I'm going to talk about, talk about three topics. Hopefully I can make it in in 20 minutes why teams are the future, what is culture, and what makes a thriving team. So, if you have your smartphone with you, you can scan this code here. And this is the question I wanted to ask everyone. Uh, how many teams have you been part of in the last six months? Uh, at work, at work. I'm curious. I already put my answer there. So, curious about your answers. If, you, if the QR code doesn't work, you can use slido.com and uh, input this code. And that will take you into the uh, results. Is it working for everyone? Cool. So some answers here. Oh, let's wait for the answers to come in. Cool. OK. So about 30 of you um, are answering this question. So at least we can find, like, from this average, we're part of at least two to three teams. So in the past, you might be, like, belong to one department, and that's it. That's your job, and you just do whatever you, you are told to do. And now, like, you're part of, like, at least, like, 50 of us, Half of us are in two to three teams. So you, you might work from team to team. Sometimes you have a lot of cross-team collaboration that you need to work on uh, with other people in your organization. And some of us are still part of uh, one team. Um, so that's the presentation here. And then my next question for you is, how many teams have you been part of outside of work? So when I talk about teams, could be your community, your side project. We have project table later. So like a lot of things that you collaborate with others to get things done uh, outside of your work. Cool. Wow, wow. We have people have like six to eight other teams. Like maybe your family, you were running as a team. Maybe your community or your uh, school projects. Uh, or something that your study group that you want to uh, accomplish, accomplish something together with your team members. Awesome. At least we have 
like 30% of us has one or more. Cool, thanks for the participation. Cool, so why, um, maybe you, I should reframe this, teams are the future. Teams are now, like now is the future. So I want to share one thing, it's like from a Deloitte consulting firm, they did the research, um, they is, um, published a model around a network of teams. So earlier I was talking about how teams were like, it's hierarchical. So like you just follow what you're going to do and then you belong to one team. And things is like command chain, you just need to get things done. And but how things are right now, it's like this. So things are complicated, it's complex, it's moving really fast, and you need to be responding to the change within your organization and outside of your organization. So how things might work could be a network of teams. So you need to tackle different challenges at the same time in order to move faster. So I heard earlier a lot of de developers are in the house today. So you need to like experiment, iterate, like I'll go through that whole process. And if you need to go through a lot of chain of comments, you need to collect 10 more signatures to sign off on something, you can never get things done. So this is like where we're heading and teams are how we get there. So to bring in another example, um, so smaller teams are natural for how we work. So I guess like everyone shared, at least you work with five more teams, like some at work, some outside of work. So that's how it's closer to our human nature. So I want to share one thing from the responsive organization movement. Um, so there are a lot of um, methodology out there, like lean startup or design thinking. Everyone's talking about similar ideas of like moving to a faster, um, more agile world. And responsive organization movement is one of them. So it's talking about like we're moving on the spectrum from like organizations from more profit oriented. Now more companies are thinking about how can we align everyone on the shared purpose? How can we move everyone toward that direction? Um, some, some of you might have heard like B Corp, we need to uh, create good for the, for the society as well, be more sustainable. And from hierarchical to network, so like the example I shared earlier, um, and then from controlling, everything needs to be in control of like, you just hear what the boss said, uh, and follow it or empowering. So earlier, uh, Catherine also talked about like how do you empower your teams to make decisions to move forward. And also from planning to exploitation. So this is also a spectrum. Are you going to plan everything at once and then release it? Or you keep experimenting and find uh, like the perfect solution, not, not the perfect, but the right solution for everyone or for your customers. And then like information is going from more private to transparency within the organization. So if like as if you control the information, you have like power over like people don't know what's going on, only you know. So you like benefit like if you're leaders in the organization, you benefit from like having that privacy. So only you know those decision, uh, decisions or information, so you, only you hold the power. But like going to a more open or transparent communication, you uh, create a movement that within your organization, everyone can uh, get access to some information so they can make decisions right away or uh, move things faster. So this is like from more predictable world to a less predictable world. So th that's the world we're heading and that's the direction we're um, experiencing right now. So for from this too, I hope you're with me on like the outside world is, ha is changing and then teams are like the smallest unit we can tackle um, and then respond to change. So when you're building organization for the future, start with teams and everyone here as part of the team so you can make change immediately. So now we're, you're with me on teams. Now we're going to talk about a little bit about culture. So culture is something like fluffy um, or like just like ambiguous. It's just something everyone talks about but nobody really knows what that is. That's a lot of times like people think about culture. Uh, I don't know if you heard of one uh, famous um, experiment. So um, there are a group of monkeys, they're in an experiment, like they, um, they're in the cage, 
and the experimenters give them um, bananas on out of reach, out of that cage. Anyone hear that story? No, awesome, so I'll keep telling. So, and then like, in the first group of uh, like uh, monkeys, when they reach for the banana, and the experimenter just like spray water on them. So there's like, oh, they are just like refrain from doing that action. And then they change uh, one monkey from the, from the cage at one at a time. So, and then the new monkey come in, um, and then um, he's trying to like reach the banana and everyone else just slap him and uh, stop him from doing that because they don't want to get sprayed on water. So at the end, the experimenter, uh, you, you might know where I'm going, the experimenter change all the monkeys. So none of them know like what will happen when they reach for the, for the bananas, but none of them did anything. So that's like the power of culture and power of um, traditions. So you might heard a lot like, why are we doing this when you when you go into the organization? Why are we doing this? It's like this is what we always do. This is the tradition. No one challenged this, and that becomes a norm. And culture is like that. It's not something written on paper, but like it's part of your life. So it's a, a lot of words here, but like the one phrase, like one sentence uh, summary of what culture is that is the way things we're, uh, we do we do things around here. And then whether you intentionally design your culture or not, it ex exists. So if you ignore it, um, whether you're an entrepreneur or like small team leaders or a team member, if you ignore culture, uh, they will come back to you later. So uh, I'll talk about what that means. So um, Peter Drucker, the management guru, he talked about um, culture eats strategy for breakfast. We might have really good product strategy. We know the product fit. We are like on for like experimenting everything. Um, but like our culture might hold us back. How do we work with each other? So if I may borrow this three circle from Simon Sinek, um, in, the, in the middle is our vision. So why do we exist? Maybe as an organization, as a team. So at the core, it's like, why do we exist? Uh, what are we fighting for? That's our vision. And surrounded it is our culture, how we do things here. So how do we interact with e each other? How do we build trust? And how do we um, collaborate with each other? And on the outside, the, the, the third circle is like where we are heading. So it's more on uh, what are we doing and what's our strategy. So culture is in the middle. So if you only focus on the out outer circle, um, you might not reach where you're uh, planning to go. So why culture now? Why are we talking about culture now? So now I believe a lot of you might have worked in virtual teams and or like you are, we are in the multi-generational uh, workforce. You might have people in their 20s and their 70s in the same workplace. Uh, all, a lot of organizations and uh, industries are going through digital transformations and like a lot of trends on flexible work. They want people to feel engaged. Um, they want to keep people in the organiza organizations. And the outside world is changing. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. So if we have a shared belief and shared set of behaviors in our organizations, we are more consistent as an organization as a whole to move forward to um, deal with those challenges in the workplace. So if you want to build a strong team, don't un underestimate the power of culture. So now I have teams and culture. So I want to share one um, research where like, we've done a lot of, so at Meteor, we've done a lot of research around how, what's, what does great teams look like, and we do some uh, consulting work, and from our own experience, we consolidate a framework around thriving teams. So if you're productive, you can get things done. You can get things done really easily uh, or fast. And if you're a really high-performing team, you, um, you feel part of this team, you are engaged, and you uh, can deal with change, and uh, you're innovative. If you're a thriving team, uh, we think there are more to that. So each individual is part of this team and makes this team better. 
So there are eight elements. I'll quickly go through it, but if you're interested, there are more um, information I can share with you later on. So I'm going to introduce some of the elements in this model. So first, balance. So when, when we talk about balance, it's usually people are thinking about work-life balance. So how much time I spend on, like, at work, how much time I spend at home. Uh, but this is not the balance I'm talking about. This is the balance around should we learn right now, should we learn from failure, should we experiment, or should we achieve results? I believe some of you might juggle with this. Should we just do what we used to do, like we know that will work, or should we try new ways? So like the balance between learning and experimentation, um, and the things we're doing and how we're doing it. So whether um, we are achieving some tasks, or like that's the results we're, we're trying to uh, accomplish, or how we're getting there. So usually, if you think about like in a meeting, people might have like, these are all the things we want to talk about, and they put an agenda there. Uh, that might be the test, like check off everything. But if you are not aware of what's happening in the room, you feel like everyone is a little bit out of it, or like the conflict is on the table, and you just try ignore it, or you just ignore it. And that's the balance where like the tension between task and process. Should we get things done, or should we uh, figure out how we work together as a team. And also, like earlier, we talked about like achieving results and uh, maintaining your own personal well-being. So that's like really special element we put in, so I'll talk about it first. And then some of other things that you might be more familiar with, common purpose interactions. So we need to know like if you're um, clear about the, the core of what your, uh, what your team is stands for, you know what this team, uh, why this team uh, exists, and you rally around the shared vision, and you can work toward that vision. And you define goals. I know some of you are using like OKRs or KPI, those parameters to measure success for your team. Make sure you achieve those goals. Um, and share accountability and support. So when you have a good plan, a good vision, you still need to get things done. You still need to execute it. So how do you make sure you're clear around your roles and responsibilities in your team, and then you can support each other to get things done, to bring the best of themselves to work? Effective communication, that's like, um, I moved back to Taiwan last year, so a lot of my clients in Taiwan are talking about how do we improve our communication. Uh, a lot of times, communication is just like on the surface, it's the sim symptom, it's not the root problem. So the root problem might be you don't know your roles or responsibilities, you don't have a shared vision. So this is like how do we run meetings, how do we create an open floor for everyone, and fe people feel safe to talk about what they're really thinking about. Mutual trust. So if you're familiar with the research uh, Google did a couple years ago when they talk about uh, effective teams, psychological safety is one of them. So how do you make sure that everyone on your team is not afraid of the consequences? So they're willing to share what's on their mind, what's, what works the best for their team. So, um, and also like how do you um, make sure that your relationship with your team members start from a good intention. You assume they have good intentions. Um, so that will change how you interact with them. We're almost there. So norms and processes. So th this is like really simple. You might have like SLP, standard process in your organizations. Um, and especially for virtual teams, it's m essential for virtual teams not to guess what's happening, trying to figure out what's the hidden rules. A if you make those norms and processes explicit, it will save a lot of time of just playing the guess guessing game. And also, like, if you know how to make decisions, are we doing consensus or a majority vote or just the leader makes all the decisions, decisions? That will change your conversation as well. Change agility. So um, this is like a good quote from Amy Adamson. So she's the Harvard Business School a professor in um, teams. So she's talking about like agility or uh, being able to change is the key to success in this age. And also, like, how do you deal with failure or how do you deal with uh, those uh, sudden change? 
and you view change as an opportunity, not a threat. That will change how your team behave or respond to external environment. And final one, meaningful engagement. So whether your team invests time or resources in everyone's growth, and everyone feel like they're uh, fulfilled in this team, they can do their best, they can contribute their best self in this team, that will bring you uh, closer to each other and you appreciate each other's contribution for the team. And that's, that's something that we often ignore and we just assume or like just take it for granted. So this is just for those, those of you who want to take a picture. <laughs> okay, this is too many words. So finally, I still have two questions for you. So if you think about this, what are your strengths for your team? Like, I will go back to the previous slide, but if you don't have the code yet, scan it. But I'm curious, like, what do you think is the strength of your current team? I know you work for, like, three or five teams. Just pick one. Pick one that is just closer to you. Just pick one. What do you think is the strength of your team? Cool. Common purpose and direction. Awesome. I feel like everyone's like really aligned with your team's uh, uh, direction. That's, that's a great thing. Change agility. That's perfect for this crowd. We're at an open up summit, so people are like more eager to change or like they think this is a, uh, you think this is a big priority. Cool, so I'll move to the next one. So I know this one is harder, but the next one is easier, because that's being critic of your own team. So what will be one thing, so this is just one uh, option, so pick one thing that you want to work on for your team. If you walk away and forget all everything, just remember one thing that you want to do with your team, or start. you can start experimenting it. Effective communication, still priority. Still like, so I encourage you later on, talk to your neighbors later, because we have a lot of good um, people with experience, they have like really good common purpose and direction for their team. So ask them how they do it. What are their processes and how they um, uh, move toward that direction? Awesome, we have like all different um, answers here. So you can also sense uh, what the room needs Cool. So this question is for you. Um, just think about one thing that you are committed to doing. So I talk about like different aspects. You can focus on your meetings, your uh, communication with others, how you make decisions, how you share team goals. There are a lot of things to tackle, but just pick one thing that you want to work on. No matter you're a team leader or a team member or just like um, an active participant, uh, you are here today, so you are the change agent for your team. So building a thriving team culture takes all of us, uh, but we can do one team at a time. That's um, what I want to share with you. And if you want to do, um, like, you can scan um, the, the left one. If you want to, like, get the um, handout or, like, summary from the talk, um, all the questions are optional, so you can just put your email there. Um, and if you're reading Chinese, you can follow my Facebook page, and I can share all information there. You can also send me a message if you have any questions to, um, to talk about or explore together. So I um, employ, like, encourage you all to take some actions and make your team a thriving team. Thank you.